call the meeting to order. Um, President Lisa McGonigal, Bill McGowan, Wayne Sodchuk, Paul Kearse, Greg Corbo. So um, I don't know who wants to start. Greg, do you want to start or Lisa? Um, I, do you want I can me to start? Okay. Thank you. Um, well, good morning, everyone. Um, so, you know, we're, we're here today again to sort of to try to come to a, a final um, decision or resolution on this issue of the betterment for 75 Border Street. Um, as we've discussed in the past, um, although the property owner um, was originally told that um, or claimed that they were originally told that they did not owe a full betterment, um, it was subsequently determined that um, a full betterment at the current rate of $37,500 was owed. Um, after you know, several communications with the property owner, um, Lisa did a, a significant amount of research into the town's records, um, which I have reviewed. And, and a review of those records has not revealed any evidence that this property had been assessed a betterment in the past. Um, what we have been able to determine is that this property was originally part of a property known as 28R Black Horse Lane. Um, that property, we, we have no record of, of that property ever being assessed a betterment. Um, and in fact, when the owner at the time applied for a sewer connection in the 1990s, um, they were denied on the ground that um, sewer was not available. Um, you know, the, the property owner was suggesting that there were other, uh, there was evidence that other properties in the neighborhood were assessed in the 1970s. And um, Lisa reviewed those records as well. And we did find evidence that properties at 51 border, 81 border, 91 Elm um, were all assessed at that time, but we have not located any evidence to suggest that this property was. Um, so, you know, in my opinion, in the absence of of evidence of a prior betterment being having been paid, um, then this prop property is subject to um, the betterment at the um, the current rate. Hi, it's Paul Tedeschi, uh, Chairman. Do I have the opportunity to speak here? Yeah, far away. Great. Uh, so, Mr. Corbett, thank you for that response. It's really uh, nothing new, other than you know, it's not the agreement that was made. So back in February of 2020, when we did all of the due diligence before we bought the property, um, we made an agreement with the town. As Lisa, as the you know coordinator, she took the time because she was new to talk to people in the sewer commission. We'd received those documents. We spoke to the broker who represented uh, the selling agent, as well as the folks that did the work for us. And everybody was told an agreement was made for us and we had the, the ability to build a four bedroom home and no betterment was to be paid. So I think that's a big piece of this. You know, we're made to feel like we're in the in the wrong here, but that was the understanding. That was the agreement that was made. And we're looking for fairness and equitable consideration as a result of that to come back to us 16 months later. So moving forward, we get that notification in August of 2021. We have what I think to be a very productive meeting um, in September of this past year, 2021. And Mr. Kears and Mr. Sawchuck specifically called out and it's on video Zoom. And, and Greg, I've tried to reach out to you to, to speak to you about this, but we had a very productive meeting. And I think two of the three uh, members of the board were in agreement that you wouldn't just put a sewer stub back there in the 70s in this original line, that some betterment would have been paid. And that you know it was suggested by Mr. McGowan that Lisa do a little legwork. And the fact that that little card hasn't been found for the Bigelow property in the early 70s, I mean, we've heard there's a, a big amount of information missing in town hall. These little cards were not digital. Um, I've probably to the, the detriment of Mr. Piat have tried to reach out to him to get access to records. You know, COVID, you can't get access, the basement, there's no longer this woman that oversees all the documents. But I go back to that conversation and I thought we had a productive understanding that, hey, there was a betterment paid. Nobody would have just put this sewer stub there. Everybody, nobody's doubting it was put there in 1973, are they? Right? I mean, I think we have the proof that that was done through the engineering plans that were sent and, and that the town has access to. 
Um, and so I'm not sure what's changed. And quite honestly, I'm just going to put this out there uh, to Mr. McGowan. I, I, I look, you know, I feel like, Bill, you should recuse yourself. We've known you for 28 years. I don't know what specifically um, has come of it, but I feel like you specifically of the three board members had a very different opinion after that September meeting. And I don't know what's changed. I don't know why um, you feel the way you do, but, you know, I just feel like maybe you've got a vendetta towards us or something, but you know, I'd ask Mr. Sawchuk to speak up relative to that original meeting we had and the understanding that, hey, you know, other properties were able to tie in um, and a betterment was paid. The proof of those betterments from our neighbors and the other two cards that Lisa found, one of them was actually a vacant lot. So whatever came of that, when that vacant lot was built upon, what was the betterment fee that those people were imposed? Um, and some of the town references that you made, Mr. Sawchuk, or I should say, the buildings in downtown were in a similar situation you referenced and that they didn't have to pay in the same way that the current um, requirements are. So again, if we had known this information back in February of 2020, we could have made our own decision and had the full knowledge. But to you know, where's that equitable fairness um, based on how this has gone down and the information that's been presented and discussed in prior meetings. Well, let me, let me just address um, your, your thought of a vendetta. And certainly I will confirm that we've known each other for a long time. I have no vendetta. I mean, I, I, I don't have the time to, to do vendettas, uh, nor do I have any uh, nefarious or black thoughts towards you or Jill. Um, the only thing that I saw the change was that <clears throat> it appeared that you were using, that not, it appeared that, that, that Lisa, whether or not it happened, because none of us other than you guys were a part of it, so the board wasn't, but Lisa may or may not, in my opinion, have said something to you that could have been misinterpreted. I, I, I wasn't there, so I don't know. I, I didn't hear the conversation. I, don't, I wasn't party to it. The, the issue that I, that I have, that I went through and researched, is that um, if you go to the Mass General Laws, Chapter 147, the only people that can do anything with a betterment or a connection or uh, a stub uh, are the board members. And just presuming for the sake of an argument, if Lisa misspoke, she misspoke, but I don't believe that happened. I mean, I just don't see, I've, I've built, dealt with her now for we several years. I have to interrupt years. you. I, and can you hear me? I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm in, I'm, I'm on in the car. I, I couldn't be on, you know, zoom and I, I'm sorry to interrupt you but this is just completely frustrating because 1 million percent Lisa did not misspeak. It could not have been more clear. It was on conference. It was on, um, you know, we, we, Paul and I both heard it and we iterate, re reiterated it twice. So you are telling us that there is no betterment to be paid before we purchase this house. We want to be absolutely clear. And, you know, it's frustrating because we did not get it. I, I trusted her at the time. She said, yep, I'm 100% sure. She actually was like jumping up and down excited for us. She said, I can't tell you how excited I am for you. I know this was important. Um, I, and so to misremember something like that for Lisa, I just have a very hard time believing. And Brian Davis contacted Lisa and heard the same thing. He will verify. Kevin Lewis contacted Lisa, he heard the same thing. So it's not just coming from the two of us that heard it. And so it's a completely frustrating that the sewer board is not willing. I mean, there are so many other angles to this where I feel this, we feel the sewer board should be amenable to some sort of agreement with us, but that sort of is the smoking gun that is just unbelievable to us that the sewer commission would not be somewhat, can give that some consideration that we, you know, relied on that information to purchase a home and to go forward and to get our sewer, um, you know, the, the um, I'm, trying, I'm just so completely frustrated to get to, to where we were, to get our certificate of occupancy, to get our inspection. She said, all we need is a thousand dollars for the engineering fee. And I have all of that in writing. So there's no misremembering happening or misrepresentation or misspoken, it is 100% clear. Mr. Chair, can I uh, address that? Um, sure. yeah. You know, I, I certainly understand the, the frustration of the, of the Tedeschi's, um, but, um, you know, it, in my opinion, I don't think it's, it's productive 
um, for the board to get into a, um, you know, a, a sort of a, a dispute as to who said what and when, um, you know, under under the law, um, it is clear in my opinion that that Lisa does not have the authority to make um, promises or statements on behalf of the board. Um, and, you know, it, giving the, the Tedeschi's the benefit of the doubt and not throwing Lisa under the bus. But, you know, if, if she said something that was in error, um, you know, the, the town cannot be held responsible for that error. Um, only the board can vote to waive a betterment um, and, you know, if there's a, a theory in the law called estoppel or promissory estoppel that says that, you know, when a person relies to their detriment on the statement of another, um, then that that statement is binding on them. However, uh, Massachusetts courts have made very clear that that doctrine does not apply to municipalities. Um, so, you know, the, the question before you is, um, you know, not who said what and when, but rather, you know, it's clear that there was some misunderstanding here. Um, you know, that um, the Tedeschi's believed that that this was not due and owing. Um, they went ahead with their project and, um, you know, no one told them to stop or to pay until, until much later. So, you know, the, the question before you is, you know, what, if any, um, you know, agreement do you wish to to reach with the Tedeschi's to try to resolve this um you know my opinion it'd be justified under the law to insist upon payment of the full amount um but it's also my opinion that it would be within your discretion um you know to to speak with them about a resolution you know that that would bring this matter to an end thank you and ju thank just add you. to that Sorry, just to add to that, you know, can we just go back to the conversation? And I'm not sure, and Bill, Mr. McGowan, Chair, you know, back it's in Bill. September, that Bill, back in September, when we had that conversation, you said we suspend three, but no more than five minutes, look at cards. And you specifically said, and it's on video, even if you can't find the exact card for the address, what did others pay? And this is where I asked Mr. Sawchuck to speak up. You know, this central sewer line was one of the first. They wouldn't have just randomly placed things there. What were others looking to do? And look, you know, the folks we bought this from um, paid the, the water betterment. They were never under the impression that they had to do this. Everybody along the way, and I think Lisa got the information from other powers that be in the sewer commission. I don't think this was, you know, oh, the Tedeschi's were always going to have to pay 37.5. I think this was brought up later by someone a year and a half later looking back. But at the time of this, quote, discovery, when we were going through this process with Lisa, we still go back to the fact that there, that sewer stub was part of a betterment that was part of an original line and that things change. I understand, look, we've had many homes in Cohasset. We've been privy to privilege fees uh, with the Little Sewer Harbor Project, et cetera. But this was an early on sewer project and it wasn't just a random placement. So I go back to that conversation and what happened after that information was finally discovered to show, hey, they're, they're roughly $650 betterment fees. Um, and again, we're willing to be very reasonable here, but you know, we were never even considering a $37,500 <laughs> that was never brought up to us. So anyway, I'll stop talking, but you know, what happened to that conversation and what changed after that information was discovered? It, it, it was, this is Jill again. It was so positive in that first meeting. I mean, Mr. Sacha gave examples of this, how this had happened to other people. He said, you know, in, in the village, the same thing happened where, you know, way back when sewer stubs were put in and, you know, people weren't sure because of the records at the betterment, what had been paid. So, you know, you got, you, I guess the sewer commission came up with what was equitable at the time. What did people pay? And Lisa found two cards um, that said at, actually one was for a vacant piece of land that a sewer stub was put on in the same exact time that we um, had our sewer stub put on in 1973 and they had paid Paul you probably can remember better than me I think it was $600, $600. so we understand that now this is a four bedroom home and you know I'm sure there is an increase I mean you know back then if they paid something who knows if it was for a one or two bedroom we're, we're willing to be reasonable but based on so many factors we just would hope the sewer commission would be reasonable with us and understanding of from you know all of these facets. If I may speak for a moment, um, 
a, a couple things um, that I wanted to uh, to address. One is, um, uh, Paul, you stated that you made an agreement with the town. I haven't seen any agreement at all that you made with the town. So if you have an agreement with the town, you stated that you had an agreement with the town that said no betterment was to be paid, is what you stated uh, here a few yeah. minutes ago. Um, so if you could send uh, Greg a copy of the agreement you signed with the town of Cohasset, I'm not aware that they would have the ability to waive betterment without approval from the sewer commission. So I'd like to see who made that agreement with you. And second of all, in reference to uh, what Mr. Sawchuck and myself agreed to uh, was an open conversation during a board meeting, uh, trying to uh, understand and assess what had happened uh, many years ago in that area of town. And, um, we did come to that agreement that if all of those uh, suggestions of what had occurred back in the 70s did actually occur, uh, we thought that that there would be a, a favorable outcome uh, for this particular property. Um, and then we were asked to go back and research it. So all of that research has been done. The property you have and that you own didn't exist at all. Um, so whatever stub was there had nothing to do with the piece of property that has been designated separately um, by the town as a buildable lot. So all of the research that has been done, um, as, as Greg has stated, still shows that nothing was ever paid on that property. Uh, though people in the neighborhood have paid, um, this property was never paid. Um, you know, we can rely on uh, Mr. Sawchuck's um, experience in the town to see what his thoughts are. Um, he's, he's been in town for 40 years and, and has been experienced with uh, the sewer department and, and what has happened over the years. But I haven't seen any evidence right now um, that would warrant anything other than uh, a mistake had been made through the process in the town. Um, that doesn't mean you're immune to being uh, charged for uh, a sewer uh, privilege and hookup fee. And um, I don't, I'm not concerned about what was said um, as, as Greg stated that, uh, you know, the sewer commission, we, we vote uh, the three of us on on what needs to be processed. So um, it's unfortunate that um, uh, there has been this um, uh, misinformation on how things were processed uh, on our side, but um, I I'd like to see what uh, what Wayne has to say on, on, on that property as well. Okay. I thought, um, well, I've been on the board now for about 12 years or so. So I've gone through the, the board when, uh, as I mentioned with the, 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 the talking that we did uh, way back there in, in um, August or so. And it was one where we took the, where we, first of all, I guess the first thing I want to say is in 1972-73, the town, when the sewer went by, basically put stubs in every parcel that was in the areas that they were going through. So I don't remember whether we went over the bridge in, in 1972 or whether we stopped at the bridge. Um, I don't know. And it would be up to Dan Coughlin or something to tell us those dates. But from there, coming down into the village, we put a stub at each lot. And there was a betterment that was supposed to be charged to everybody at that time. And, and it may have only been charged to people that actually had a, a house on it and it was just sitting there elsewhere. You know, it was just sitting there, staying there. What, what ha and so my suggestion at the time was to take, and I, I had a number of $6,000, which was the town share and the home owner's share because the, 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 connections that I've made over over time and in, in the early 80s and stuff was 3,000 was what the, the landowner paid and 3,000 is what the town paid in, in our taxes. So I took the number, which is the number that we used, I'd say five years and earlier. And then we escalated the, the, the $6,000 was by just the cost of living, um, whatever the statistics, statistics were to bring it up. And a few years ago, it was it brought it up to about nine thousand ninety five hundred dollars. Today, it's probably ten or eleven thousand um, dollars. But then, what where my 
confusion came in is when the privilege fee was adopted. And when it was first adopted, it was adopted at $28,000. And then it was increased to um, 32,500 or so. And then it, then it was increased to 35,000, whatever it is today, um, $37,500. And it was sort of like, you know, an, an extra amount than what it cost to put it in. And it was the fact that it, it was a privileged fee that um, allowed us to have extra money to be able to, to do the things at the plant that needed upgrading. And so it's, it was somewhat of a funding mechanism. Now, I don't know if Greg um, is using the privilege fee name at all or whether or not we're using the um, betterment um, understanding. Um, which is would be a lower amount because that the betterment is to recover have the town recover the cost of actually installing the 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 all of the work is the the, the main and the the uh, area going to the lots. And I guess the only other thing is in the little harbor district, the twenty eight thousand represented the town's cost to, to sewer the whole area, and then but the and it, and only occupied houses was were connected to sewer. So, and no stubs were put in for vacant land. So over the last 15, 12 years or so, uh, people have been um, building new houses on old lots that never were built on. And in fact, they had the responsibility of paying the money to go into the street, to tap the main, to, to uh, be able to have the connection. So they paid the money from the main to the property line. And then they had to pay the money from the property line to their house and also had to pay for the um, connection of the, you know, the, the pump system. So many of those people were faced with 40 and $50,000 bills to connect a sewer, even though they actually paid for the, the, the people there paid, paid the $28,000. And then they had to pay from the street to the house. And the other people that I said, the vacant lots paid significantly more. So um, you were um, fortunate that the land had a stub put to it, probably because there was quite a bit of land. There was you know, a number of acres of land. And I think the theory was they're not sure whether they're going to come on to Border Street with a sewer connection or whether they're going to go over to um, Black Horse Lane. Um, and so that's... Um, you know, that's where that's where my, that's what my conversation was. And, and just to answer your question, we do have because it was given to us back in this discovery phase in 2020 that, you know, from um, uh, the town's engineer, you know, it didn't cross over the bridge at the time. It ended right at the border, 81 Border Street, the Porter property. Borders. Yeah, but but it was put there back in the day and back to the information Lisa discovered there was a vacant lot on this line a little bit closer to town that was assessed a $600 betterment fee. Um, that was a vacant lot. So it wasn't just, do you see what I'm saying? So they paid based on a vacant lot. And, and I, I'm, I wish we had found this card. I don't, you know, we don't have the access to the town records. And if we need to extend this to give us that ability. But I thought that you, Mr. Kears and Mr. Sawcheck had said, hey, if we can find some examples of what was paid. And look, we understand this is not 1973. We're willing to be reasonable. And, and back to Mr. Kears's point, I don't have a written agreement signed by Lisa and ourselves. I wish I did. Jill and I regret not, you know, we were the GCs well, and it's not having that, but there was an understanding with the information exchange that, hey, she was excited for us, but she did, she spent time, it took a couple of weeks for her to get back to us, talking to Mr. Federico and others in, in the sewer department before she got back to us. When I say the word agreement, you know, I'm referencing, um, I guess, from a legal perspective, right? What we were engaged in, meaning we made the conversation. Uh -huh. Go ahead, Jill. Uh, if I just, we, we do have an agreement. We, we, I'm sorry, you have to say it again. That we, is our agreement. We had a verbal. A verbal um, we, can you hear me now? Yeah. Sorry. We, we do have an agreement. We had a verbal agreement with Lisa, and so, so did Kevin Lewis, and so did Brian Davis. Then we had a follow-up agreement by email that said, this is so exciting, Lisa. Thanks for the news. What are the next steps? 
And she said, all you need to do is pay $1,000 for the engineering fees and you're good to go. And then our next agreement is that we were issued a sewer permit. Then it was inspected. Then we were issued a certificate of occupancy. So we had followed the letter of the law, everything. Yeah, I, I'm curious, have you ever, we've, we've heard from other people that you can't flush a toilet until that betterment fee um, is paid. We did not, we were able to move in and live there for over a year. And it wasn't until that time that we had somebody come back and say, oh, by the way, you know, you had to pay this. So we had an agreement all the way along and part of it is written. So so that's with, we with, with, all, with, all due, with all due respect, um, you, you don't have an agreement with the town. Um, there is no verbal agreement. What you did was you went through a process um, that the town requires to build a home. And through that process, you went through the administrators um, that handle each department and they explained to you what needed to be done. And they gave you their opinion of, of how things were going. That's not an agreement. That's a process. I'm and just curious, have you so, ever allowed anyone to move in and live there for over a year without paying a betterment fee? We, as a it's, sewer commission. I know the sewer, just the yeah. sewer commission, yeah. the sewer department, have you ever allowed people to move into a home for over a year without paying a betterment fee. We have been told you cannot do anything without paying that betterment fee. It just, it shows sort of the miscommunication and misinformation of this entire process. Have you ever allowed anyone to build, move in for over a year and then come back and say, oh, by the way, you're, you're supposed to pay a betterment fee. Have you ever allowed anybody else to do that? Mr. Chair, to through you to Mr. Kears, I, I don't recommend that you answer that question. And again, you yeah. know, no, no one is is denying that um, that that there was a miscommunication, that mistakes may have been made. But you know, going round and round and trying to place blame is not going to bring this to a resolution. Um, so you know, right. um, to you, Mr. or Mrs. Tedeschi, you've indicated that that you're willing to come to. Um, a, a reasonable resolution of this with the town. And so my question to you would be, well, what is it that you're proposing so that the board can have something to consider and, and either accept what you're proposing or, um, you know, respond to it in the way that it wishes to? Um, you know, I, I just think that that's a better use of our time at this point, because we're, we're not going to reach a consensus as to who was right or who was wrong in this situation. Sure. So again, back, Wayne, you, you excuse me, Mr. Chair, if I may address uh, Mr. Sachuk. So you referenced some of these situations in the past, the betterment, you know, and you're not sure if this is a betterment or a um, whatever the, the term is, but, you know, what's a, I, not to pose it back to you guys, but what, what's a fair number to you, I mean, you know, up until I think what four or five years ago is when this fee changed. Again, we don't, we never were given knowledge of what the fee was. So you can imagine when we opened the letter, it first started with forty-two thousand, then they realized we were a four bed, not a five bed. But you know, wasn't it about twelve thousand dollars just a couple of years back before that that change was made? Um, again, I don't know the numbers. But that's only from some research I got from someone who develops homes in in Cohasset. Um, who's a friend. And he said, you know, for a long time, it was about a $12,000 fee when you would hook up to town sewer. And then I, and I get things change, whatever, whatever. Um, I, I don't have a specific number, Mr. Corbo, but you know, we're willing to be reasonable. And I thought that's where we were going with the September meeting. And then it took a while to get these pieces of paper. Uh, and I, like I said, I wish we had one for the, for the Bigelow property, but you know, what's a fair number to you guys? I mean, and, and what, and what's a, a justifiable, this is a different situation than some vacant lot on Jerusalem road that never had a stub and that then applies and gets permitted. You know, I understand there's been issues with, with the town sewer. So that we still go back to that point, but you know, is, is that number of 12,000 reasonable? I, I, I can tell you that um, from everything that was discussed um, and what Mr. Sodchuk said, the fees were over the years going from the 70s to the 80s to the 90s. It's now 2022. Um, the only thing that I'm willing to support is a 50% reduction in the uh, privilege and hookup fee from 37.5 to 18,750. Uh, we would be amenable to move forward and have this result. So, 
So, Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion. Yeah, can I speak before you do it? Sure. Um, I was thinking like something like 20 or 25, but you know, if if the board wants to do the 50 percent, I would I would support that. Any other comments? Wayne? I think that it's a I think it's a fair resolution. It will probably be close um, to the 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 um, appreciation of the of the downtown um, EDUs going over time. So it's going to be very close to a number like that. And I would support. Mr. Chair, okay. um, if I could, um, I, I would suggest that that the motion you know be subject to um, a written agreement um, that you know fully resolves this matter um, with a, a release from the the Tedeschi's and um, you know something in that agreement that that recognizes the unique situation that that the Tedeschi's are in, um, and I certainly would be happy to prepare that agreement and, and work with the, the Tedeschi's or their attorney. Um, so, you know, I think that that emotion could be, um, you know, move to resolve the matter by payment of $18,500 um, subject to um, a, an agreement, a written agreement um, acceptable to town council and approved by the board. Yeah, I was going to I was going to ask that because my my concern is that people that we've recently given betterments to and connections um, are going to, you know, they watch these things. So, um, yes, I would I would agree with that. So we can make a motion that um, for 75 Border Street, um, that the uh, assessment of a privilege and hookup fee be eighteen thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars subject to. A, um, a written agreement uh, with the release. I'll second it. Want to do a vote? Yeah, Greg, is that adequate for the for the uh, motion? Yes. You want to make a okay. All right. No, I, th I think that's clear enough. Okay. Who wants to vote first? We're going to wait for Wayne to second the motion. Second. Okay. Wayne Sychuk, agree. Approve. Paul McGowan, aye. Paul Kears, aye. All right, so Wayne Sychuk, aye. And before we leave the matter altogether, um, do, does anyone want to speak to the issue of um, when this, this payment should be due, whether it's, you know, within a certain period of time or, you know, in a lump sum or smaller chunks that's yeah i think it should be paid within 90 days of the agreement signature and unfortunately we can't seem to get the uh, the folks at the town hall to allow us to spread out payments um so although i wouldn't mind doing it i just don't think we have the right to do it so no i confirmed that th this morning thinking yeah. that that might that might be a solution and they're like we don't have we don't have the administrative wherewithal to do uh, payments. We, we understand. We I remember that conversation with Mr. Piat when he was on with you guys some months ago. So we understand that situation. Right. Okay. Is that um, time frame acceptable to you, Mr. or Mrs. Tedeschi? Yes. Okay. Thank you, Paul, and thank you. Uh, yeah. Thank you all. See you guys. Thank you. Bye. Um, let's see. So I've got, a, I, I've got another one at uh, 11, I believe. Yep, Where, that was uh, it. That was all that was on the agenda today. That was okay. it, yeah. Yeah, okay. so, so Bill, you and Lisa and I are going to talk about the um, Chief Justice uh, Cushing Highway project. Yep, okay. I'll be there. Okay. All Thank right. You. Thank you, guys. Thank you, all right. So, all right. And Greg, Bye -bye. you're going to work on an agreement? Yeah, so I'll, I'll put together a written agreement, um, you know, for you to approve. What's your your meeting schedule looking like, or do you just want to schedule a special meeting for it? Next uh, Tuesday, I think we meet. Okay. All right. I'll try to see if I can get something to you before then. Um, Lisa, why don't you just put it on the agenda for now? Okay. Okay. So that, um, that would be the fifth, the fifteenth. Is that the next meeting? Yes. Okay. All right, I'll see what I can do. Thank All you. right. 
We're good. All right. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Good day, everyone. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Yep. Oh, shoot. He's gone. Yes. Oh, um, I can reach out to him. No, that's okay. Well, everyone's gone now, but um, I guess there was a, I heard, I don't know if you did, a motion to adjourn with a unanimous vote. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh. I, I heard that. Okay. <laughs> and seconded. Yikes. All, All right. right. Just let the minutes reflect that okay. <laughs> there was a motion to adjourn at, you know, 1035. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. All right. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.